Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Code of Princess. In the last episode, we came to the realization that Queen Destiny is in fact the resurrected to steal, and she's planning to use a series of codes and the Empyrean Stone to give herself eternal life. Once we came to realize her plan, the Empyrean Stone rejected us from the castle and scattered our heroes throughout the world. However, it appears that some of them have found themselves in another world entirely. And if they ever wish to get back to their own world, it seems that they're going to have to save yet another first. Let's see what lies in store for our heroes in this new world. Let's play Blade Strangers. Forces are losing ground. Many of the worlds have already fallen. The last Blade Stranger has been erased. Any signs of restoration? Crushed down to the smallest units. It appears they've also been defeated from the backup server. So they have been entirely erased then. Correct. They can't even be restored from the backup version. <laughs> A new Blade Stranger must be selected. There are several potential candidates from the world that have not been selected before. Yes, but we don't have enough time to go to each world and recruit them. The situation is dire. There is no other option. What about the transmitter? We can use it to bring them all together. The transmitter. It's true that we used it for the same purpose long ago. An excellent idea. We should transmit them here right away. Transmit! Transmit! 
Wait, wasn't there a risk involved with the transmitter? Some strangers becoming confused and lashing out indiscriminately? It's true, transmission can cause disorientation. It would be bad if they started a quarrel. I agree, we can't allow that. We can apply an artificial memory patch. They will think they've entered some kind of world fighting championship. We will embed the desire to win the world championship into their memories. Altering memories is dangerous. The link to their worlds will become severed. Merging them with the new world may not be successful. If the connection to their worlds is severed, their souls will be removed. Not that it would matter. Their fighting power would be no different, even if they have no souls. All those participating in the fight will not have the souls. They will be evaluated equally. That makes sense. How wonderful! Embedding artificial memories and proceeding to the summoning. No objections. No objections. From among the summoned strangers, the last one left standing will become the new Blade Stranger. You tell me there was a mode 67 and 68 but no 69? Come on, I call shenanigans. What the heck kind of drugs were Nicholas on when they made this game? Good morning everybody, it's Midnight and Beyond. Welcome to Blade Strangers. The long-awaited sequel to Code of Princess, or at least I'll keep telling myself that. Before we can get back to our original goal of trying to stop Distille from uh, taking control of the Empyrean Stone and giving herself eternal life, we gotta get ourselves out of this fighting game tournament, and we need to do it fast. Thankfully, I have it on easy, so I could do just that! Hooray for being cheap! But yes, I am no pro when it comes to fighting games, so I wanted to make sure I could actually get this done, especially with how much trouble I was getting, I was having with the stinking Code of Princess battles just now, but I definitely wanted to show you guys what Blade Strangers was all about, because this means a lot to me, just seeing these characters that I was never expecting to be part of anything greater than just the tiny little niche 3DS game that they got, and that was gonna be it. But they wound up being not only in this fighting game that had like all these other all-star cast of characters on the Nintendo Switch, but they are the stinking main characters of it, they're the center focus of it all, and it's amazing. And I just absolutely had to show it all to you, so hope you enjoy what you end up seeing. Now, unfortunately, they don't have fully voiced acting in English or in Japanese, but we gotta go with what we have, I suppose. Even in other dimensions, Solange's outfit is unacceptable, though that's probably for the best because I, I probably wouldn't want to see a dimension in which this is acceptable uh, attire for anyone to wear. But yes, Emiko is a character from the game uh, Umihara Kawase, I apologize if I'm completely butchering that. It is a, as far as I'm aware, there's only one game that's been brought out of Japan, but it was for the DS I believe. 
and the main character is a girl named Kawase, who I believe will be seen later on in this tournament. Uh, she's a fisher woman, she fishes, but it's a platformer or something like that. And then the other Kawase characters in this game, there's Noko, who's a police officer from the future, because of course she is. And she's also like 17 or whatever. And then we got this girl, Emiko, who, as far as I'm aware, when I, according to my research, she had a dream that she had a pet cat. And apparently that was enough uh, backstory for this character to have their own position in a fighting game where they ride a giant stinking cat. Uh, I think Emiko's actually top tier uh, on the tier list right now, or at least that's who uh, Black Cat Fight, who's the current uh, head of the leaderboards, uses. So, believe it or not, this is the best character, is as funny as that is, but whatever. I'm gonna see if we can keep on doing these combos. What I try to do when I'm trying to learn this game, I try to just do the combos that I remember from Code of Princess. Uh, they don't exactly uh, copyright over, but it's a good way to get you started. Just uh, stick to something that you know and see how it matches up. And if it doesn't match up, then try switching it around a little bit. Uh, the developers uh, compared this game a lot to Smash Bros, so I could see... Hello. I could see Solange going up in the sky. What the fruit? Okay. That just happened. I could see Solange... Uh, not what I'm trying to say. I could see them uh, saying when this, comparing it to Smash Bros, they uh, want you to... Um, think of it as like sort of that control scheme or whatever and I got very close to almost losing but thankfully I didn't so we just keep on going and now you know why I played this version on easy because or I guess it's normal difficulty so I guess I could say I'm doing at least a bit better than the bare minimum though there's super easy easy normal hard and super hard so I'm in the middle I'm like doing somewhat decent getting through these fights right I'm a good fighting game player right maybe, maybe possibly not. <laughs> Is it just me, or do they seem to be confused about the reason why they're fighting? The artificial memory is not stable, but as long as they end up fighting, it makes no difference. No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. Why they decided Master T should be in this game instead of Zozo or Allegro, I have no stinking clue. Okay, just had to get that out of my system because, I don't know, maybe if I used Master T a lot more in Code of Princess then I'd be okay with him being here. Not that I dislike him as a character or anything like that, he's very funny and stuff, but... And also his interactions with Emiko in cutscenes are very funny as well, but... Uh, it's just so weird, I don't know how they chose him, like, why they didn't use the four main heroes of Code of Princess and stuff, I don't know, and they're just such cool characters to look at and, uh, and all the artwork and everything. Not to mention that, uh, the person who did the artwork for the official, like, art book of both Blade Strangers and Code of Princess, it's the same guy who did the artwork for, uh, and character design for Street Fighter 2, which is really cool. I think he also designed these characters, he didn't just draw them, I could be wrong on that, of course, because when it comes to fighting games, I know next to nothing, apparently. It brings me back. I know this doesn't really classify as a fighting game, but, um, it reminds me of my Let's Play of Doc Lewis's Punch-Out, even though it's, like, a 10-minute Let's Play, it took, like, stinking six hours to record, and... I, I activated my special attack but by pressing the shoulder button, but I was trying to skip to the other rail to avoid his attacks because I'm so used to playing Code of Princess. So at least I learned how to use my special attacks. It's a good thing, a good little mess up to have. Uh, let's see what we do. Go in here, do a little uh, smash attack like that, and we're good. See, I know how to play fighting games, right? Um, Solange has such a noble quest trying to like revive her father and like the fact that they're all brainwashing her and there's no real reward at the end of this That's kind of crummy that she's in it for this reason. And she's gonna be disappointed in the end It's three it's three it's three Is she okay? She was ranked number one on the list of potential blade strangers Top of the list top of the list 
Top of the list, uh, question mark. Let us watch the next battle. It appears things are progressing well. We pray that nothing happens until the new Blade Stranger is born. So desperate that we resort to prayer in our hour of need. It's unprecedented. 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 This space is completely shut off from the outside. No one will ever be able to find us. The bigger issue at hand is if the Blade Stranger will emerge before all the worlds are annihilated. Ah, uh, it appears the next match is about to begin. Okay, so for story mode, every character has a specific character that they end up fighting for every round, so it's always fixed as to who you're going to interact with, except for stage 4. Stage 4 is always uh, going to be a guest character of some kind. By guest character, I mean a character that isn't actually owned by Studio Sizensen, uh, or, well, no, Nicholas owns Isaac, I believe, so, uh, the characters that could appear in stage 4 could either be Isaac, Shovel Knight, Quote, or uh, Helen right here. Helen is actually an original character made specifically for this game. Oh, you can also find Gunvolt here. But uh, Helen is an original character made specifically for this game. I don't know why they did that because she's not really a main character in this plot or anything like that. She's just another character from another world. It's kind of weird. I remember when I first played through Story Mode Solange, I was fighting Shovel Knight. I was sort of hoping I would see him again just because it would make you guys excited to see him, I I'm sure. Maybe we could show off uh, some other battles and I'll... Uh, edit in some other characters like other Code of Princess characters so you could see those other characters that you want to see. I don't know how many more times I'm going to say characters, but whatever. I had a theory that Helen was actually going to be the a main character in Code of Princess 2 and is going to get revealed later on or later on this year. Uh, unfortunately, no such announcement happened, so we just have to uh, continue on with Helen being a character from this game. Not that this game's bad or anything, it's just that I would love to see a real true and blue Code of Princess 2. Wouldn't you? Oh, are we finished already? Oh, wow, it's like Peach's equivalent of, oh, did I win? It's actually the World Championship. Tsuboroshi! I thought because he had the mask he was brainwashed, but apparently no, he's not, and he's just using the name of the mask because he wants to, and he... I was always joking about the sexual tension for your sister thing, but apparently it's true. That's kind of lame, because they made Lion Gate like such a cool character in the other game, but now he's all like a joke in this one, being like, oh, I'm... Hot for the sister and stuff. That's weird. I don't know. Whatever. We're not going to talk about that even further because I'm not in the mood for that sort of conversation. Let's just go ahead and kick butt like I know I can. And I get to, uh, to have a revenge of sorts on Lion Gate because he's a lot easier to fight in this game than he is in Stinking Code of Princess. So, just go ahead and annihilate him. And just drop kick him. Forget the singing sword. Go ahead and drop kick this fool. Go ahead and get completely comboed in true Lion Gate fashion, I guess. Let's see if we can get some combos in there. Counter, 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 counter. Can you please not get attacked like crazy? Reversal, reversal of fortune. It's like a wheel of fortune, but a reversal. Can I go and get an attack in? Keeps on guarding, it's too far away. The reason I don't like quote unquote real fighting games, because Smash Bros. isn't a real fighting game apparently. Is that like it's so hard to like run in them? I don't know why, but like when you try to run, it just doesn't work properly. And I don't get it, it's just so confusing. And I don't know why I'm not getting any sort of heat up energy, but not like I need it because I'm gonna kick your sorry butt without it. Here you 
You're so mean, brother. Oni-chan. <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh, we need the voice acting back. Let's go back to our real dimension. ASAP. Should be fine after this. This is the final battle in the game against Noko. What a very intense final boss this is. Fight on! Oh jeez, hello stinking blaster. Oh my god, Noko is stinking crazy. I don't know anything about this game, but like, she's stinking cool, I'll say that. She's got like a single laser gun shield tray thingy. I don't think I know, but like, Noko is a very interesting character, uh, just in terms of like this sort of attacks that she could do. It's really stinking weird, but hopefully I don't get my booty kicked by them in the final battle because I've been having a complete win streak this entire time and I would not like to lose that. Now time for round two. I like the galaxy background, looks super nice, but not as if any of the stages actually matter because they're all the same, but that's what pure fighting game spirit's all about. You can't have crazy hazards or items and stuff because it ruins the experience and stuff. Whatever. Just go ahead and do a super awesome combo. Slash them down into the ground. I wish it was that easy to lock on with that attack in Code of Princess, but unfortunately not. Uh, so you can I please get... No, 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 no! Aww. Wow, I actually lost a fight. Who will possibly win? Oh no, it's actually intense. It's not completely one-sided for once. I guess that's good, sort of interesting to watch, but still, obviously I wouldn't upload it if I end up losing, because that would just be a waste of time and stuff. So we need to get through here and save the world so we can go back to other world that we need to save. So much world saving that needs to be done, and yes, I know this is completely obnoxious and I shouldn't be doing this because it just makes all the tension ruined, but of course I just end up uh, falling out of the combo anyway and ruining the tension even more. But it doesn't matter because we are the champion of champions. They certainly write the Code of Princess characters in a different light in this game. What is going on? There has been a breach. Someone from the outside has gained unauthorized access. Impossible. Is it their doing? How did they find us? This is bad. The stranger has not yet awakened. Deploy the barrier walls. Keep them out. We're not going to make it. Data transmission has been identified. She's coming. This is bad. She is too strong. There is no way the stranger can win. In order for them to awaken as the Blade Stranger, we must activate their soul. 
we must buy ourselves more time. Reinstall the defeated members. But we need much more time than that for the awakening to reach completion. Just do something. We're done for. Please hold. A direct access request is coming in from the main encryption line. Goddess Exivia. Everyone, try to resist her power. Original build to. ここは誰かが私を呼んでいるいつも笑顔ですがそれは心の底からの笑いですかえどういうこと愛想笑いではありません心の底から笑ったのはいつですかそれはもうだいぶ昔心の底から涙したのはいつですか悔しくて叫んだのはいつですか何を言っているの助けて誰か全てを失ったあなたの手を握りしめたのは誰ですかそれはあ兄仕方ないねついといで目覚めましたかストレンジャーよ勝てるわけないじゃない私は今までパズパズのグレードストレンジャーを食べてきたのそれが生まれたてのコトリちゃんに何が何だかわからないけどけど心の奥のその奥から聞こえてくるのですソウルですそれがお前の魂なのですわかりますあなたを倒さないといけないということだ最高のごちそうだねデュリアンアロケーションテーブルの導きとなる抜き力さんで美味しく食べてあげる This is the true final battle of Blade Strangers against Lena. Lena is once again an original character made specifically to be the antagonist of Blade Strangers. A very stinking cool character, which I again wish got implemented a lot more than she actually did because. There's is not really a whole lot of story in this. We got one episode of this uh, side story right here and it's already come to an end. I really wish that fighting games put a lot more effort into single player experiences, but oh well, I guess that's only something that a very small market of people aka like me want to see. But I don't know, maybe other people will want to see it too. Or at the very least, maybe we could use these characters again in a sequel to a certain game? Maybe, possibly, you know what I'm hinting at? Oh, who knows. All I know is that we need to go ahead and defeat her so that we can save all worlds, and then we can go back to our world that still needs saving. Not really sure how that works, but who cares about that? This whole thing is the big old kerbobble fobble of misinformation, but we gotta make the best of it because we still got a lot of lives on the line, and we need to go ahead and protect them all. Let's see if we can just finish off this fight once and for all. 
Got a lot of crazy combos in, that's for sure, but we don't have to worry about that because no matter how difficult it may seem, we'll always come out victorious. Even if you got a big old stinging Kamehameha laser. Reminds me of a certain other character that I wish was here with their Kamehameha laser, but whatever. I ain't talking about no Goku. I'm talking about my friends who are waiting for me back in Deluxia. And that is Blade Stranger's story mode. I'm sure this game has an infinite amount of fun and entertainment for people who are fans of fighting games, so if this interests you at all, then please do yourself a favor and check it out because it is such an interesting game with such an interesting cast of characters. I kind of consider it the Island of Misfit Toys for characters who people wanted to see in Smash but didn't make the cut for whatever reason. It's cool to see characters like Shovel Knight or Isaac gain up with characters like uh, the Cave Story duo of Quote and Curly, and stinking Code of Princess characters. I will never get over just how exciting I felt it felt when I saw the Blade Strangers showcase at E3 for the first time uh, back in 2017, I think it was, or 16. It was just an overwhelming feeling to see that happen. It was unbelievable, like a stinking dream that any sort of Code of Princess content was actually at E3. And here we are, we finally got the game. It's an amazing game for people who are fans of fighting games. I certainly enjoyed it. I enjoyed that I could actually learn it and understand it. Even if I'm not super keen on how to play fighting games, it was a fun experience. And I'm glad that it exists and that these characters that I'm so, so fond of are now available to a wider audience. But all that is behind us now because it's time for us to return to our own world and save Deluxia.